All right. Today we'll be discussing Mount Carmel unit test, then CBSE mathematics, obviously. So without further ado, let's begin with the first question. Now, obviously, there is a very short type answers question. So let's see. Find the zeros of this polynomial. Now, this polynomial can be easily factorized. Um, obviously, I can see the factor also x minus 4 into x plus 5. You can easily split the middle term. So zeros are 4 and minus 5. Moving on, second. Now he says find the quadratic polynomial whose zeros are 3 and minus 5. Now if the zero is 3, the factor is x minus 3. If the zero is minus 5, the factor is x plus 5. Multiply the two and you will get the quadratic polynomial. It will turn out to be x square plus 2x minus 15. Moving on. Now he says a pair of linear equations, this and this, have how many solutions? So let me check how is a1 by a2, b1 by b2 and c1 by c2, how they are related. So a1 by a2, so 1 by 2, b1 by b2, 2 by 4, c1 by c2 minus 8 shifted, so minus 16. So this is 1 by 2, obviously this is 1 by 2, obviously this is 1 by 2. That means a1 by a2 is equal to b1 by b2 is equal to c1 by c2. This is the condition for infinite solution because the lines are coincident. All right, moving on to the next one. He says, find the value of k for which the given system of linear equations is yeah. happened. My mark apparently. Oh, it's back. Right. Find the value of k for which the given system of linear equations this and this has solution. Now, no solution condition is a1 by a2 equal to b1 by b2. Not equal to c1 by c2. Right. So, k by 3 should be equal to 2 by 4, should not be equal to 5 by 1. Obviously, this is satisfied. I can say it because I have common sense. Now, these two I can equate. So, k by 3 is equal to 2 by 4. So, this is 1 by 2. So, k is equal to 2 by 2, which is the answer. All right. Moving on. Now, he says find the value of p if one of the zeros of the quadratic polynomial is minus 3. If the 0 is minus 3, that means if I replace x by minus 3, value of the polynomial becomes equal to 0. The definition of 0, right? 0 of a polynomial. So, p minus 1 into, uh, instead of x, write minus 3. So, minus 3 whole square plus p into minus 3 plus 1. Now, this is the value of the polynomial and this is equal to 0. Done. This is nothing but 9. So, 9p minus 9 minus 3p plus 1 equal to 0. So this is 6p minus 8 equal to 0. So, p is equal to 4 by 3. All right, moving on. He says solve during subs uh, using substitution. This and this. Substitution. So, either I'll substitute x or y. So, I like this because the coefficients are a little bit tinier as compared to the previous one. So, I can write x as 4 minus 2y divided by 3. Substitute this value of x over here, right? So, 8 into 4 minus 2y by 3 plus 5y equal to 9, right? Oh, now, um, we can multiply. Is there a common thing? No. So, multiply this to so 32 minus 16y divided by 3. Now, 3, I'll take um, LCM anyway. So, plus 15y equal to 3 into 9, that is 27. I'm skipping a step because that's a very trivial step, but you do it in your paper, not me. Right, so minus 16y plus 15y minus y is equal to shifted to that side, that is minus 5. So y actually turns out to be 5. You have y is equal to 5 substituted here, so x equal to 4 minus 2 into 5, 10 divided by 3. So minus 6 divided by 3, that is minus 2. So my solution is x equal to minus 2, y is equal to 5. All right, moving on. Now he says find the zeros of the polynomial and verify the relationship between zeros and coefficients. Okay, let me write my polynomial first. 6x square minus 7x minus 3. Right, so I need to think of two numbers whose sum is minus 7 and whose product is minus 3 into 6 minus 18. So obviously I can do that. 6x square minus 9x plus 2x minus 3. I can take 3x common. 2x minus 3. I can take one common. So plus 1 into 2x minus 3. That means 2x minus 3 into 3x plus 1. You could have directly done that. No, no, no. 
to write it in your papers now. No directly. You have to spread the middle down. Cool. So 3 by 2 and minus 1 by 3. These are, these are my zeros. Now the verification. So you will find out sum of zeros first. Sum of zeros is nothing but 3 by 2 plus minus 1 by 3. Take the LCM 6. So 3 into 3, 9 minus 2, that is 7 by 6. Then you will find out negative of coefficient of x divided by coefficient of x square. That is equal to minus of minus 7 divided by 6, which is 7 by 6. Ah, from 1 and 2, you have the relation. From 1 and 2, sum of zeros is equal to minus coefficient of x divided by coefficient of x square. You need to write that. Then you will say this relationship is verified. And don't forget, you have to do the same thing for the product of zeros. Find product separately. So, 3 by 2 into minus 1 by 3. That is equal to minus 1 by 2. Then write constant term divided by coefficient of x square. And it will turn out to be minus 3 by 6, which is minus 1 by 2. From 3 and 4, product of zeros is equal to constant term divided by coefficient of x square. Hence, the relationship is verified. If you write all of this, then only you will get the full mark. All right, moving on. Now he says a lending library has a fixed charge for the first three days and additional charge for each day thereafter. The first three days fixed charge. I do not know what that charge is. Suppose that charge is x. Right? Additional charge for each day here after thereafter. Right? So let that additional charge be y. Fixed additional. Cool. Now Daisy. Oh, I like the name Daisy. Daisy paid rupees 27 for a book kept for 7 days. Book kept for 7 days. That means 3 plus 4. Right? Now, this is a fixed charge. X to the 9th house book plus 4 additional days. So, rupees by for 1 additional day. They are 4 days. So, that means the additional money that is 4. This is equal to 27. Rosie. Okay. Again, I like the name. Rupee, uh, paid rupees 21 for a book kept for 5 days. So, 3 plus 2. This is fixed, so x plus. Additional days are 2, so that means the amount is 2y is equal to 21. Find the fixed charge and the charge for each extra day. So, I need to find the value of x and y. Cool. You have two linear equations. Two variables, subtract it and you will get the answer. This is 2y is equal to 6, y is equal to 3. Now, y is equal to 3, substitute in this equation. I like it because uh, this is tiny. So, this is x plus 2 into 3, 6 equal to 21. So, x equal to 15. So, fixed charge is 15. And the charge for each extra day is rupees. Alright. Moving on. Solve you, you, uh, using elimination. Cool. Uh, right. So, coefficient I have to make same. Right. So, here I have 4. Here, here I have minus 2. So, let me make the coefficient of y same. Multiply this by 2. So, this is 4x minus 4y equal to 4. The second one is, uh, first one is 5. 3x plus 4y equal to 10. Now, you can just add them up. So, this is 7x. This gets cancelled. This is 14x equal to 2. Substitute it in which equation? Maybe this one. So, 3 into 2 plus 4y equal to 10. So, 4y equal to 10 minus 6. 4y is equal to 10. So, my solution is x equal to 2 and y equal to 1. Alright, moving on. He says draw the graph of these two equations. Cool. Shade the triangular region formed by these lines and x axis. Okay, cool. So, let me make the tables actually. So, 2x plus y minus 6 equal to 0. So, x and y. Let me make. So, put x as 0, you will get y as 6. Put y as 0, you will get x as 3. The easiest one. Obviously, line is determined by two points. So, I will just take two. Then, the table for the second one. 2x minus 5 plus 2. You know, right? Then, x is 0. y is 2. Then, y is 0. x is minus 5. I will just take two points because I can determine a line. Right. So, there is my graph sort of. Obviously, you will make it better. So, first line. 0, 6. 0, 6. Suppose it is here. Then 3, 0. So here. I am not marking it up. It is a tentative graph. But you understand my viewpoint. So this is my first line. 2x plus y minus 6 equal to 0. Alright. Now let me use another 
pen a color to make my frog prettier i guess all right okay fine um the next one is this so zero comma two zero comma two see here okay can you see the point here minus one comma zero so here i have that my line this is my line 2x minus y plus 2 equal to 0. Shade the triangular region from the, these lines at the x-axis. This is my line. This is my second line. X-axis is this one. Shading. Okay. Shade this shade. Which is the answer. That should tell x-axis only. So, each of my wrong. Cool. With this, we have completed this discussion of the paper. I quite liked it. Thank you. And I will see you next time.